let's just take a moment. Just realize this is an historic moment. This is the first time this car has ever driven like this in 30,000 years. Meet the team. There's a potential that I could get electrocuted. With the mechanical expertise. More oxygen, more fuel. That makes more power. To test all things automotive. It's almost like surgery. If I make a mistake, we'll blow up the engine. This is Motor Mythbusters. This is our job! Where science meets the streets. Now, when I was a kid, I drove across the country with my parents to the Grand Canyon, and we stopped at this Flintstones amusement park. Wow. It was the weirdest thing. You walk in, and it's like you're in the cartoon, but it was like super creepy because oh my God. it was just me and my sister. The place was empty. But they had actually fabricated a Flintstones car. Wow. We got in, tried to push it, but it was, you know, a prop. It wasn't going anywhere. But ever since then, I was like, someday I want to build that Flintstone car and see <laughs> if it would work. That's what we're going to be testing in this myth. Do you remember that cartoon? But it might be before your time. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it, oh. but uh, some pictures are like ringing true in my mind. All right, so <laughs> carry on. It was the first animated sitcom. It beat The Simpsons by like 30 years. And it was basically set in the prehistoric times. You had cavemen, cave women. And it was a prehistoric fantasy land, but was infused with tons of modern technology that couldn't have existed at the time. OK, so according to the cartoon, the Flintstones car was made of two giant stone roller wheels, a tree trunk chassis, and a convertible canopy. That's a heck of a lot of mass. The first part of this myth is to test if a heavyweight vehicle can overcome friction and inertia using foot power. And if it does move, the second part is to see if a rock-wheeled vehicle can handle running at the highway speed shown in the cartoon series. Fred was a really big guy. He was the biggest character in the entire series. He had to be at least six foot tall. All right, well, let's figure out how big we're going to make this thing. Yeah. And we're going to sort of base it on the idea of Fred being, being six, six feet foot tall. tall. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing the diameter will be about two feet. Mm-hmm. So then it would have to be about 10 feet long. All right, so it looks like in the cartoon, the wheels are made of stone. Time out, time out, time out, time out. With, with stone, it's going to be ridiculously heavy, and the rolling resistance will be off the scales. Getting it moving and stopping is going to be huge challenges. Fred used his feet to accelerate the vehicle and stop it. That's. Bananas. Uh, was he barefoot? He was yeah. barefoot. He had no foot protection yeah. whatsoever. But he had like, massive oh. feet. OK. So that's a lot of surface area. And speaking of rolling resistance, I'm not seeing any bearings <laughs> right here. Yeah. And that looks like wood on wood. Isn't that how they made fires back in the day? Yeah. That's a great point. Is there steering? But maybe in the cartoon, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, look like there's much but, to make it steer. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. I think this is going to be something for all of us to try to drive, because I don't think one of us alone <laughs> is going to be able to get this car to move. What do you say? Shall we uh, yabba dabba do this? Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought you said you haven't seen the car, too. A little research, you guys. Oh you God. nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> Before we can road test our foot power and see if this thing will actually move, we need to build it. So Tori sourced some prehistoric materials. Oh my goodness. I got the perfect material for the wheels. Material for the wheels? Limestone. <laughs> um, okay. okay. It's going to be perfect because it's going to be soft enough where I can actually, you know, carve it into the shape that we need. Right. But it's going to be durable enough that we can use it as wheels. Oh, all right, sure. So Let's I'm going to reinvent the wheel here. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right, what's uh, what's up with these? The crystals. <laughs> oh. These are actually my tools. I'm going to use the quartz because it's going to be hard enough. I mean, I figure back in prehistoric times, they would have had primitive tools. Right. So the quartz would, you know, I could use them as chisels to carve my shape. What, this, do, you, what do you think? Uh, Keeping with the you know, prehistoric materials? I feel what you're trying to do, but that looks like a lot of work. We got to be purists. And also, like, I don't know, you might put some bad juju into the uh, into the environment with these. Are you feeling the energy on those? I'm feel, I feel the energy. 
This is not gonna work. Too much work for Claire. No, this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome. Okay. So I'm just right now I'm just gonna do like a, a test <laughs> just to see if I can cut a wheel shape and uh, see if we can get going on this Flintstone I, vehicle. I like your oh, this is gonna be so awesome. Oh. Poor Crystal. Poor Tori. Tori, you have your work cut out for you over here. It's gonna take him years to get that going. <laughs> it's gonna be there forever. All right, so it's taken him a while. We don't have a freaking month here. And I don't know if I can find a piece of limestone that big. I hear you, and we need to work smarter, not harder. That's true. I think we should consider using concrete as an analog for limestone. That's and actually a really good idea because well, we can mold you. it in whatever shape we want to. Very We're true. not gonna spend all day like, you know, shaping this thing with and, our uh, hammers. And if we do something simple like a mold, we can get to a hardness that's very similar to that of Tori's limestone. The wheels are what, 24 yes. inches? Yes, so maybe a 24 by 24 would be ideal. Yeah. But our Tori, ever the purest, isn't giving up without a stone-aged fight. So I went back and watched the old Flintstones cartoons, and it turns out they had modern tools. So forget the old stuff. I'm going with modern technology. 